So if God has victory and He give us that victory, He give us the power over Satan and He will give us faith in Him. So how can we have victory over Satan? <clears throat> in uh, Ephesians 6, 12 on, it talks about uh, the armor of God how to fight against Satan. So we look at these verses now. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. It means princes or countries. Against powers, uh, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and have done all to stand. So it says that we, are, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It's not against people that we are wrestling against, but against principalities. Now here is not talking about uh, physical countries, but it's talking about the dominion of Satan, the dominion against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age. So it's about uh, the dark forces, Satan and the demons, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So here Paul make it very clear, it's not fighting against spiritual kingdom. It's fighting against uh, spiritual dominion. We're not fighting against physical kingdoms, but we are fighting against spiritual kingdoms spiritual dominion and the power of darkness, the rulers of darkness against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So when we are fighting against spiritual uh, beings, the demons, then we need to the whole armor of God. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that we may be able to <coughs> withstand <coughs> excuse me <coughs> <coughs> That you may be able to withstand in the evil day and have done all to stand. So that we can withstand in the evil days against Satan and have done all to stand, that we can stand for. So what do we need to do? Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplates of righteousness, and having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmets of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So here it talks about the spiritual warfare. So the armor of God. So first is the waist, uh, the, uh, girded our waist with truth, that we have the truth around us to support us, to give us strength, to give us authority with the truth. And then the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate is, you know, uh, on the hearts. Now, in the old days, the, uh, the armor, they have this breastplate so that when the enemy uh, try to shoot at them or uh, try to pierce them, the breastplate will protect them. So it's for protection. And then having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So, also, we put on shoes. The shoes are the gospel, the preparation of the gospel of peace, that we will go and preach in different places to preach the gospel. So this is, now this is fighting against Satan, that we have the gospel to bring people to Christ so that we can take people out from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. So we, we have the gospel. And then 16, Above all, take the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked ones. Wicked one. So here is the attack of Satan. Now both the breast, breast plate, the breast plate is for protecting against 
Satan's attack and against people's accusation so that people cannot accuse us because we have the righteousness of Christ that Christ has declared us righteous and also we have the righteousness of the saints of the Christians that we live a righteous life so there are two kinds of righteousness first is the righteousness of Christ given to us through the death of Jesus Christ when we trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior then we have the righteousness of God and then we have the righteousness of our own that we are faithful to obey God and that is our righteousness so then Satan cannot accuse us and people cannot accuse us so the breastplate is for protection against accusation and then the shield of faith is for protecting any from any kind of fiery darts of the wicked one now the fiery darts could be uh, you know people accusing us attacking us uh, saying bad things about us um, blasphemy against us uh, or blasphemy against God against the church or uh, doing different things to attack the Christians so the fiery darts will come from Satan and from sinful people and then we have the shield of faith what does faith mean faith means I trust in God God is protecting me God will take care of me so it's very important that we realize that it's, it's not with you know physical power that we protect ourselves it's with trusting in God that he is protecting us God loves us so we can trust in God and relax in God and don't worry now to me the definition of faith is trusting in God that when God promises I don't worry I trust in him when God works I don't worry I trust in him so that is faith so when we have the faith uh, the shield of faith that means we trust that God will protect me God will bless me God will help me so I don't have to worry at all so if anyone tried to attack me I would just say God will protect me I just trust in God we don't have to worry about it we don't have to fear and we can trust in God's blessings so it's very important that even in all in the midst of all difficulties in sickness or any kind of difficulties will say God is protecting me I can just relax in God I don't have to worry I don't have to fear and then the helmet of salvation helmet over the head is also protection so that they cannot take our life we have salvation so that Satan cannot take our spiritual life and our physical life that we are in the hands of God so these three are for protection the uh, first the uh, 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 girding our waist with truth that is also for strengthening for strengthening and for pr protection and then the breastplate of righteousness is for protection from accusation and then the shield of faith is for protection against attacks of Satan and people and then the helmet of salvation is for protection that Satan cannot steal our salvation that we won't lose our salvation and then the sword of the spirit is for attacking now the gospel and the shield of uh, and the uh, sword of the spirit are for attacking the gospel is for bringing people to Christ and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God so when Satan attacks us we can declare God is protecting me we declare the word of God God is my refuge no one can take the blessings of God from me God is with me all the time he is in front of me and behind me he is laying his hand upon me so we declare the word of God to protect us and to attack Satan and to also bring people into the kingdom of God to let people know God has loved you all this time God wants to give you salvation so when you trust in Jesus as your Savior you'll have eternal life so God wants you to have eternal life God wants to bless you and God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life so God has given you this eternal life do you want to take it so we have this word of God 
the sword of the Spirit. This has the power, and the Holy Spirit will work with the Word of God. That whenever the Word of God is preached, the Holy Spirit will work in the heart of people. So when we hear the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will move us to obey Him. And when we preach the Gospel, the Word of God from our mouth uh, will work on people. The Holy Spirit will work with the Word of God to change people's life. So this is the, the tool of attacking the kingdom of Satan. And then also praying is also the, the weapon. Praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So we pray for all the saints. And also prayer is building up a strong relationship with God. Building up the strong presence of God. That we love God and worship God. And God's presence will come strong upon us. And then we pray for all the saints that they will be strengthened. Especially those who are being persecuted. So we pray for them so that they won't lose the faith. That God will strengthen them and give them direction and guidance so that they will follow God and have strength. So we pray for all the people and we pray for the fruit of preaching the gospel. We pray that God will use our preaching to bring people to, to the kingdom of God. So this, this is the armor of God here, what we talk about here. So we, first we have the, the truth that give us strength and give us the assurance, give us a firm foundation. And then we have the breastplate of righteousness to protect us from any kind of accusation from Satan and from people. And the gospel for us to bring people in the kingdom of God. And a shield of faith that we believe that no one can take away the blessings of God. Therefore, we trust in God. We believe in God. We say, God, you will help me. You will bless me. So I trust in you that you will protect me that I don't have to fear the devil. So this is the way to stop the attack of Satan. But some people use other ways. They will shout and shout and they will say, oh, a spirit of uh, uh, anger, spirit of uh, adultery, go away, go away. They think that it's by shouting or for, by driving out the demons that the, the sins are taken care of. Now, the Bible has not talked about that. The Bible talks about repentance to God and say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. So the Bible doesn't talk about crying out against the spirit of darkness and spirit of adultery and anger to drive out the sins. The Bible doesn't have that. The Bible has repentance to God. And the Bible has prayer toward God, not toward Satan. Now, except when we drive out demons, in Jesus' name we cast out the demons, except when we drive out demons in Jesus' name, then all the other prayers should be directed toward God. We find in the whole Bible, even when Peter and Paul were, pers were persecuted, they did not declare to Satan, you have no power over me. Satan, go away. They didn't pray like that at all, Peter and Paul. So the Bible does not support the kind of prayer to declare to Satan, you cannot you know, keep me in prison, you cannot do this, do that. We, we don't pray to Satan. We pray to God. We pray to God that God will protect us. And God has all the authority. We don't have to declare to Satan to drive them away. We have God who will drive them away because God has victory already. So I just haven't found that kind of prayer in the Bible. But I know it's very, very common. Instead of using faith, they use shouting to drive out the demons. So we, and, and also, you know, to overcome sins, we repent. And then we uh, have a, pray to God to have a strong presence of God and have the joy of the Lord and have the motivation from God that will say no to any kind of sinful thoughts. That's how we overcome sins. It's not by casting out the demons of uh, adultery. You know, it's, some people think that when you drive out the demons of adultery, then the person uh, would, you know, would not have adultery anymore, that he would have power to overcome the sins. So they think that they need to you know, shout to Satan in order to have victory. But the Bible doesn't teach that kind of prayer. 
When we submit to God and resist the devil, he will flee. Victory over Satan is not hard. James 4 7. Therefore, submit to God. Most important is most important to submit to God. Resist the devil. So whenever the devil tempts us, we'll resist the devil. We'll say no to the devil. Say no to the temptation. And he will flee from you. He will flee from us when we submit to God and have a strong presence of God and praise God and love God. And whenever Satan says anything, we'll say, this is not true, go away. And then we trust in Jesus. Now, when people have demons, then we, then we drive out demons. But when it sins, then we repent to God and ask God for strength to overcome the sins. Now, Satan comes to attack, resist him with faith. 1 Peter 5, 8 to 9. Be sober and vi be vigilant. Therefore, because your adversary, the devil, walk about, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. <clears throat> so here, be sober. Do not be drunk, but have a clear mind. Vigilant, be watchful. Therefore, uh, because your adversary, your enemy, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. He's walking around trying to attack, seeking whom he may devour. And how can we resist him? We resist him steadfast in the faith. It's always trusting in God. It's God who has victory over Satan. So we, we uh, trust in God. We stead, we're steadfast in faith. And we know that God has victory over Satan. God has victory over sins. God is victory over suffering. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, that all the people are experiencing suffering of different kinds, and then we, you know, we just resist the devil. And then we are steadfast in the faith that we don't have to be afraid of Satan or, or his attack or any kind of suffering. We know that God has total victory over all the power uh, of Satan. So, be sober and be vigilant, be clear-minded, watchful, and then resist the devil and be steadfast in the faith, that knowing that all the Christians are going through difficulties also. So we don't have to be afraid and we just trust in God and have faith. So here again, it talks about his faith, our relationship with God that helps us to overcome the power of Satan. And then when we follow the Great Commission, Jesus will stay with us. He has authority over Satan. Now, it's very important to understand that. Now, there are some people who say that when you um, go into mission field, there was someone who said to me like this, when you go into the mission field, when you drive out demons, Satan will attack you. Now, this is really ridiculous and against the Word of God. Now, let's read what the Bible says. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So it says here that Jesus came and, and spoke to them, to the disciples, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So Jesus has all authority. He has authority over Satan. He has authority over power, any kind of power, any physical power, any spiritual power. Jesus has all the authority. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. So bring them to become Christians and also followers. Disciples means learners, students that they don't just believe. We don't just make believers. We make disciples. We help them to believe in Jesus and then we help them to follow God, to obey God. And baptizing them in the name of the Father and, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So baptizing the, the Christians and teaching them to observe all the things that I've commanded you. So the co a Great Commission doesn't just have evangelism. It also has teaching them not just teaching them, uh, just telling them the truth, but telling them to observe, to obey all the things that Jesus has commanded us. So, not just to know the truth, 
but to obey the truth then I'm with you always even to the end of the age so Jesus said I'll be with you always when you preach the gospel and when you teach people to, ob to observe all the things that Jesus has taught us then Jesus will be with us so when Jesus is with us he will protect us when Jesus is with us he will protect us against Satan and he will guide us he will give us strength and provision so that we can prevail so that we can do great things with the power of God so so here it says that when you go and preach the gospel to the whole world I'll be with you now of course not everyone go to the mission field but whenever we preach the gospel uh, to the people around us we teach them to observe everything Jesus has taught us then God will be with us and he'll protect us but there was there were people who said that oh when you go to the mission field there was one person who said that to me when you go to the mission field so very often Satan will attack you Th that is not biblical that is giving Christians fear to go into the mission field Jesus said when you go into the mission field when you preach the gospel I'll be with you always when Jesus is with us he will give us strength and protection and provision and and also uh, success in the ministry that Jesus with us means every blessing so we need not fear at all we don't need to fear at all but some people always give people fear they you know it, there are some Christians who say to other oh uh, someone is putting a curse on you and then people are afraid we don't have to be afraid of curses in Jesus Christ he has victory when we have a strong relationship with God when we love God and obey him and and serve him we have we don't have to fear anything at all so I hope that we all will say with Jesus I don't fear anything and any kind of teaching that will bring fear to people we don't want to follow now when people sin they should fear but when we repent of our sin and we really pay attention not to sin and to take care of our sins then we don't have anything to fear so in all these verses it tells us not to be afraid of any of this and then 2nd Corinthians 10 verse 4 talks about what is our warfare for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ so what is our weapon the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God is the strength in God our weapon is the strength in God to pull down strongholds strongholds now what kind of strongholds arguments and every high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God so when people argues against God or any high things that any pride of people when they are proud against the knowledge of God so we will casting will cast down all these arguments and all these proud things and bring every thought into captivity to the uh, obedience of Christ so we bring people to submit to Christ that is the warfare so the warfare is helping people to not to follow Satan's way not to follow sin not to worry not to doubt not to fear but to trust in God and obey God and serve God and submit to God totally that is the spiritual warfare the spiritual warfare is to bring people to totally loving you know believing in God loving God obeying God and submitting to God and serving God but some people they uh, define spiritual warfare as that they will have meetings and shout against Satan they will shout Satan go away Satan go away and then uh, the, uh, the like the Satan of idols uh, of idolatry Satan uh, the demons of idolat idolatry the demons of uh, of adultery uh, the demons of idols 
go away all this go away so they think that this is the spiritual warfare but there is no such example in the Bible there is no such example you search and see if there is any description of that both in the Old Testament and New Testament there is no such example now if God wants to teach us something he will give us in the Bible he will give us the teachings in the Bible let me let me tell you what one preacher I heard one time when he preached about Ephesians 6 12 to um, 18 he said that this is the armor of God so you put on the armor of God and then you start to do something else to fight the devil so they think that the armor of God is not the fighting against the devil they think that it's something else so that's what they mean they will put on the armor of God and then they will declare to Satan Satan go away go away and they think that is a spiritual warfare but that is not in the Bible we don't have to be afraid of Satan at all when we trust in God and obey God and serve God and declare the Word of God and help people to love God and submit to God and serve God and love God we don't have to be afraid of anything God will protect us and bless us that we don't have to worry about uh, the attacks of Satan that you know that what the preacher was saying is Ephesians 6 really doesn't talk about spiritual warfare it just talk about the preparation of the warfare you put on the armor of God and then you start to go out and do the spiritual warfare and the spiritual warfare is what he described and it is not in the Bible is to shout to Satan to go away so it's not in the Bible but some people think that that is uh, the spiritual warfare they think that is by you know shouting the devil and uh, uh, they use the fist sometimes even Satan go away go away they think that this is the way to fight against Satan but the Bible says that no it's when we have the truth when we have the breastplate of righteousness then we are protected from the accusation of Satan and people and then the gospel that is our weapon and a shield of faith so that Satan can attack us and a helmet of salvation to protect us and the sword of the Spirit is for attacking the Word of God is for attacking to preach to people to bring them to submission of God so and then pray prayer is attacking so that we can bring more people to Christ and be watchful to this end and also in 2nd Corinthians this is uh, the warfare that this is the warfare to pull, pull down the strongholds and cast down the arguments against God and all the pride of the people and, uh, and bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ so that they will submit to Christ okay some faulty beliefs about spiritual warfare some people regards any sickness emotional problems interpersonal problems family problems and any difficulties as attacks from Satan so they are often afraid of attacks now they think that all these are attacked from Satan now I would say if a person sins then some of this can be attacked from Satan but if a person loves God he loves God then it's not the attack from Satan it's just the difficulties we face every day because the world is facing hunger the world is facing wars physical wars the, fa the world the world is facing famine and and different kinds of disasters and these are not from you know this these are not necessarily the spiritual attack from Satan these are prophesied by God It's because of the curse on the earth when Adam and Eve sinned then the whole world was cursed and therefore it's going down more and more it came from the curse of God and the world will go worse and worse but we trust in God will have more strength that God will give us victory in the midst of all the uh, difficulties so whenever we get any problem we get sick don't say oh Satan is attacking me attack, attacking me again now what when people talk like this what happens is then they 
then the people will be afraid. Oh, I don't know when Satan is attacking me. And then they'll say, oh, this morning I, I remember when I woke up, I felt so tired. It must be an attack of Satan. So they, whenever they have any problem, they think, oh, it's an attack of Satan. Then they become fear for no, be fearful for no reason. We don't have to be afraid of Satan. We know that God is protecting us. He has given us authority and nothing can harm us. So we need to believe all this. And then some people think that Satan attacks those who are faithful to preach the gospel or drive out demons more often than others. So some people think that those who preach the gospel a lot and to uh, uh, drive out demons or go to the mission field and these people will be attacked by Satan more. So they say the faithful Christians will be attacked more. Now it's true that Satan will try to find ways to attack the faithful Christians. They try to find ways. There are some Christians who preach faithfully, but they're not faithful in keeping the marriage in a loving way. Or they don't treat people nicely. They use harsh authority to rule the church. They might be faithful in preaching, but they are preaching the law because they are harsh on people. And they are not loving the people. Then they will give the devil a foothold. The devil is looking for ways to attack preachers and all Christians. But for Christians who love God and obey God, Satan cannot attack. We must be very clear about this. Don't think that because we are preachers, therefore Satan will put extra force to attack us. Now when we sin, then Satan will attack us. If, if a preacher steals money, then he can be attacked and then he can lose his uh, ministry, lose the church and lose the trust of the people. So when people sin, then we give the devil a foothold and then he can attack us. But when we love God and obey God, and then when we sin accidentally, we ask God to forgive us and then we don't have to be afraid. And we should be careful because God, uh, Jesus said to the man who was healed of 38 years of sickness, He said, sin no more, lest the worst thing will come to you. So we don't sin because if we sin, the worst thing can come to us. That can come from the sat attack of Satan. So Satan cannot attack faithful Christians and faithful pastors. He only attacks pastors who have, uh, who have openings in their life for Satan to attack, who have uh, footholds in their life for Satan to attack. When they have anger or love for money, a love for women, and a, uh, a lack of love for their wife, then they will give the devil a foothold. So we don't have to be afraid. Some people say, well, you are faithful pastors, all the faithful pastors in this place, you'll be attacked by Satan. Then it will make the faithful pastors afraid. We don't have to make them afraid. We tell them, Jesus has victory over Satan. We have victory and Jesus will protect us. Jesus will make sure those who love Him and obey Him will go higher and higher. That's what the Bible promises. The Bible promises that when we love God, our life will go higher and higher and our, our life will go to a higher level. God will protect us and bless us. In a faulty belief, some people think that driving out demons of adult adultery will reduce adultery problems or driving out other demons will solve sin problems. So they think that they drive out the, uh, uh, the spirit of adultery and then the adultery will go away. It's, it's not by, the Bible doesn't teach them. Now if a person has demons, then the demons should be driven away. But the Bible doesn't teach that when you drive out the spirit of the adultery, then the person will not have the adultery. To overcome adultery, the person needs to build up a strong relationship with God and trust God and worship God and love God and obey God and realize that sins are terrible, sins are destructive. And then he would not give the devil a foothold. And then, and then whenever he has any lustful thoughts, he knows that uh, that Satan can attack him. If we follow this lustful thought, then he, then he uh, say no to the sins and say, I don't want to look at that woman. I don't want to think about that woman. I want to think about God. I, I, you know, I don't have to follow 
my lust. And some people think that driving out demons from churches and lo localities will solve the spiritual problems. So some people think that when they, you know, uh, they drive out the demons from the church, then the church will grow strong. No. The Bible never promises that. But when we love God and help people to love God and worship God and honor God and obey God and serve God and glorify God, then the Bible promises that that will bring strength. You, you look at the early church. They worship God together. They share with each other. They love each other. They preach the gospel. And then the church grew. The Bible never said that they cast out the demons of uh, of uh, Judaism or other religion and then they, they or, or the demons of uh, adultery and therefore they became strong they're not the Bible never said that number five some people think that Ephesians 6 14 to 18 is just putting on God's armor and they think that this passage has not told us how to do spiritual warfare and they think that spiritual uh, so they think that that's just putting on the warfare and then you start to fight fight the devil by shouting at the devil that's not from the Bible the Bible doesn't talk about that and spiritual warfare is wearing God's armor and then driving out a demon's power so they think that you wear the God's armor and then you drive out the demon so they think that that is fighting the spiritual warfare but the Bible doesn't say that so we look at the Bible we cannot find any Bible verse that supports that but that is followed by many churches you go to many churches, they will shout to the devil, go away, go away. They, they shout that and they think that that will bring revival. 